Hello, welcome back. Fred in the shed. And uh, another one of these little things that I've uh, decided to send off for eBay. I don't actually have a use for it for this this time, so it's not a complete waste. And this is one of these small little USB endoscopies. What is an endoscopy? Well, basically it's a camera with lights on the end of a wire. And um, sort of, you know, people think of the medical profession, this is the sort of thing they might stick up your butt. <laughs> Well, they might stick this down your throat to find out if you've got anything untoward going on. and uh, But quite useful around the home if there's sort of, you know, if you've got a blockage or something in your sink and you can't sort of locate it, you can uh, put this down and have a look and see what's going on. I actually bought this to look at my water pump on my car and I sort of put this down the, uh, the cam cover. And I, was like, I wasn't able to really see what I wanted to see. But uh, certainly works. These are pretty cheap. Uh, I think this was about six or seven pounds, something like that. They go for about five to 15 pounds, depending on the length of cable. This is a two meter cable. So it comes with a little software disc like you normally get on these products. We'll come back to this in a minute because uh, it's a little bit difficult to use, I must admit. Like a lot of these Chinese uh, sort of programs, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit quirky. I've got a instruction sheet, I guess. You've got an adjustment there on the on the LEDs on the USB connector itself. Um, it's got six LEDs. It's a seven meter, seven millimeter camera head. You can get thinner ones. You can get them going down to about four millimeter, but they're a little bit more expensive. High resolution CMOS camera. Yeah, it's not high resolution at all. And then obviously your cable length: two meter, five, seven, and ten, and fifteen. So if you had a blocked drain, for example, that went out under, under, you know, from your house or sort of flat or whatever, you could uh, get a fifteen meter one. But I don't know. It's, this would bend up. I mean, I can't imagine this would stay straight for any length of uh, length of time. So quickly. Uh, go through the specs now the resolution on the camera isn't very good i mean it's uh, 640 by 480 so we're not exactly going to do any high resolution imagery from the uh, camera itself but it should be good enough just so you can see what's going on you've got the six white leds that are around the side to keep things illuminated it's uh, it's got automatic exposure control which we'll be having a look at that with the, the software the viewing angle is 67 degrees and then uh, another thing which is the, the focal distance now i did try this out on the car now it's four centimeters it won't focus it which is a little bit too far to be honest. I, I found when I was using this that I, I really needed it to focus up quite close. So four centimeters, you know, is about that. And uh, yeah, that that could be that could be a little bit better. And it's a uh, USB two device. It doesn't say whether it's compatible with US, USB three, but uh, USB three is backward compatible. And then finally, we've got this little prism here. Which, if I can get this open, I'm struggling with these bags recently. I should really edit this out, shouldn't I? Bear with me. Um, got this tiny little kind of, well, is it a 45 degree prism? And uh, the idea being here that you screw this onto the camera. And that's, that's quite good, the fact that it screws on. So that it doesn't, I, th I thought it would just slide on at first. And then the idea is that when you shine the camera down, this gives you a sort of an angle going up that way, which means, uh, again, you, but you don't have to sort of go in at sort of a horizontal angle, you can go at a vertical angle. But once again, you know, you've still got this four centimetre offset, which is on the uh, on the focusing, which is a little bit dis sort of disappointing. OK, I'll, uh, I'll get the software loaded up. And then we'll uh, we'll have a little quick look at the uh, the software on the computer, and I'll just sort of quickly talk you through that. So the software that is provided is something called View, Play, and Cap, and in its essence, it's a very basic software to capturing the video sort of imagery. Uh, there are some sort of controls on here which are quite useful. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast and the, uh, the sharpness. Now I found these sort of be quite handy, but the problem was every time you close the program and you restart it, you lose all of your settings and that soon became quite sort of frustrating. But you know, 640 by 480, well, it's not the best sort of resolution. And as I said before, that four centimeter focusing gap is a bit of a problem, but you was, I was able to capture sort of some reasonable stills that is probably sort of uh, quite useful. And you know, I, I would have forgiven the clunkiness of the software 
if it had been uh, stable, but unfortunately it's not. I found that every time I tried to capture video after just literally a few seconds, the software would crash and I'd have to restart it. So I started looking around for something else that I could use. So here we are just doing a quick test here with the uh, endos end endoscopy scope here and uh, just using the built-in microphone on the scope itself. Um, yeah, I gave up on the uh, Chinese software. Um, I just couldn't quite work that work that out and as I said before the, the presets weren't being saved so just using uh, Serif Movie Plus here to do the uh, recording and yeah you know it seems to work obviously uh, 640 by 480 it's never going to be particularly good resolution but uh, as I move around the room here the camera it kind of does you know it does auto adjust a little bit um, yeah it's not particularly great there's Kenny coming up to have a quick look <laughs> perfectly fair that's not a situation you're going to use it you're going to use it to get inside something that you can't see with uh, with your eyes and it's probably a lot easier to use the scope than it is to use a mirror and a torch so here we are in my car and i want to get down between the camshafts here and have a look at the water pump and the timing belt just to sort of check that out and uh, yeah under these sort of circumstances the scope does work quite well that you have to remember that four centimeter focus gap so you want to make sure that you don't push it in too close now do you remember i said that the scope had this tiny prism so you could see at a 45 degree angle well i decided to try that out but i have to say i was quite disappointed here um, first the leds reflect back on the mirror and overpower it and even if you turn the leds down you still lose a good proportion of the viewer image so i think a little uh, prism is a bit of a foul so to sum up this endoscope here well i think it gets the thread in the shed kind of okay rating i mean it does have its limitations but on the other hand it is pretty cheap so kind of what do you expect um firstly the camera the 640 by 480 resolution that's a little bit low um i think maybe sort of uh you know high to high high def tech maybe 720p would have been the sort of slightly better the leds work quite well and it's good that you have a manual adjustment on those because that's quite important as you bring it close to things because the leds can overpower the auto exposure uh, focusing as i've said before the four centimeter gap is a little bit disappointing i think it would have been nice if it had had a slight sort of macro lens and uh, allowed you to get in closer the little prism yeah a little bit disappointed with that it blocked out part of the image uh, i'm not sure how kind of useful that would be um, yeah, so that's a bit of a shame. And also, again, on a negative note, the software, I pretty much found it unusable uh, using Windows 7. It might work perhaps better on XP or something like that. But uh, yeah, didn't, I think it's better that if you've got your own video capturing sort of software such as sort of a movie suite or something I'm sh most of those do cover video capture so that's all the negative things out the way uh, on a positive note it, it does it does work as long as you don't ask too much from it you can stick this in nooks and crannies and uh, basically you know if you just wanted to perhaps look behind the back of your skirting board if you dropped a screw down there or something or you want to check the back of the wiring on a plug or look for a mouse you know something like that general sort of everyday things um, yeah it is quite useful it does allow you to uh, go into places that you sort of can't normally see you just have to be aware of its sort of limitations uh, I think that comes down to price I'm sure that there are a lot more expensive models available and uh, maybe that's something you might want to look at if you want to go beyond the basic sort of needs and requirements but you know as for now yeah it's okay for the money that's that's, that's asked it does work it just has its limitations okay i think that sort of sums it up um as always please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it that helps me and that uh, sort of helps the channel and i'll leave a few little caption or little video captions at the end here if you want to go off and uh, have a look at some more fred in the shed video uh, your views are always very very important to me and i do appreciate it but uh, as for now i'd like to say cheers thanks for watching stay safe and of course i'll catch you all on the next one